The first thing I would want to stress here is that in Windows, knowing what you're running is really, really important. Okay, so that's the number one factor here. We want to know what are we running. Just hold Control, Shift, and Escape, right? So Control, Shift, Escape will bring up your task manager. In this case, it's a fresh Windows operating system, so you might notice that it doesn't really have that many applications running. On my host machine here, you'll see that there's a ton of applications running. So it, here you can see, obviously, way more processes running than what I have on that Windows 7 virtual machine. Things like Steam, third-party applications, Firefox, drivers, antivirus stuff, really basic. So keep in mind that your computer would probably have more processes than um, what you see here. But this is just a simplified version of what we're going to do so that we can see uh, what are the processes that are running and how to identify whether or not they're legitimate. So you'll notice that there are several tabs up here, right? Performance tab, this shows how many processors you have, a services tab, a processes tab, an applications tab. And if you see applications that you see are actively selected, like, I don't know, if I open Firefox, you should see that Firefox appears here. Okay, and if I want to see what process this is, on Windows 7, I can go to process. On Windows 10, you probably see that if you're in the processes list, it's a little bit more complex. It divides it into the applications that are actively running in the foreground and then background processes. But if you wanted to see like a program here, you probably end up going to right click and you'll see that that the options are not the same. You would want to go to the details option and when you select the details option, that's when it gives you the list of processes, right? So a little bit different. You can also just get to that by going to details at the top. So you know processes, details. And that's where you have your list. And you can list them by, you know, how much CPU they're taking up, what their names are, you know, the process ID, description of it. Getting back to Windows 7, if we have a process, we can go ahead and go to the go to process option and it'll bring us that option. Now here you have several different options. One of the cool things is you can end the process or related processes. There's a process tree, which is basically like a series of dependencies that this process relies on in order to, to close it. You can do that and close the program that way, or you can change the priority of the program. And you can even do some really cool stuff like setting the affinity, which is like de determining manually how many processors you want to allow. Um, but in this case, let's talk about let's talk about how do we identify if this particular process is a process that is legitimate or not. Well, the first thing you can do is you can actually go to you can look at the name of the process itself and then you can go to different websites. And so uh, we're going to try this now. We're going to go to as an example. There's a website called file.net and on file.net you can actually take a process, let's say in this case we want to know if task host is a legitimate process. We come over here and look for task host. And you can search by name and so I'll get task host.execute. Here is a description of what task host actually is and what it does. And so now you can see more information about whether or not there has been an identified virus that has, has used the exact same name. This is really the kind of information that you need to know to identify whether or not each individual process on your computer is what it says it is. Okay, and then we'll try an example of a different website here. I'll, I'll link the different process identifying websites down in the description below so that you can have a good starting point for trying to identify these different processes. So let's let's take a different process here. So let's say we've got dwn.execute, which is the desktop window manager. Now, because these are very obvious processes, we can say that it's it's safe to say that these are probably the ones that came with the operating system. The system is a very 
basic system. It hasn't had anything installed on it other than Firefox. So because of that, you know, obviously we're expecting that these are legitimate. You can search these different publicly known processes to see what's going on, right? So we're going to go for dwm.execute. And then this is a little bit more of a simple um, explanation. If you click here, you can get more detailed information. And so you want to know, is it harmful? Can you stop it? Is it Does it take up a lot of CPU? Why is it giving me errors? Here's another example of a website that you could use. What is execute.com? Or we'll look for csrss.execute. Let's see what this is. The good thing is that if you're actually willing to learn about these these different processes, you'll probably find that each of these websites has different information that you may not have realized if you were a newer or maybe a technical user that doesn't really get into maintaining the optimization of their system or the security of their system. So now if you're new to these things, you might realize that, oh, okay, this is telling me that I should look for to see whether or not this is an executable program or what exactly it is and there are specific things that you'll learn by reading oh this is a program that does blank or this is a type of process that is based in this type of function and that's how you begin to understand some of the more in-depth things that are happening inside of your computer so you can actually click on different links on this website. I know it's more limited, but it does have useful information. I would caution you, like for instance, if this process if this process identification website says, is this spyware? And it says no, you want to make sure that obviously that you aren't being spoofed in some way, that there isn't some malware running on your computer that uses the exact same name as the process as we were discussing before. So just because the website says no, that doesn't necessarily mean that this isn't a virus. It just means that, generally speaking, you're not going to be able to identify this process based on name alone, right? So if you know that this is the process that it is because it's a fresh system, fine, that's okay. But if you've been going for several years or months or however long you've been using your computer and installing different things, you might not just look it up on one website or on multiple websites and say, oh, it says that it's not a virus so therefore it's not a virus there's a possibility that spyware or adware may be named very similar to a system file make sure you check the exact naming Just those three the, that I wanted to show you once you found out what each running process does you can determine whether or not the process is legitimate or if it's an unauthorized process so if you're in doubt either talk to a system administrator or if you don't know any just do a little bit of Google research right so what is dwm.execute? You know, there's a there's a likelihood that there's going to be some website that describes what it is. You know, what does it do? When did it first start shipping out with Windows or what programs install it? Etc.